Let me tell you what I've been doing for the last year. I've been going around the country and parts of the world talking to physicists, cosmologists, philosophers, some theologians about the universe. I do it because I love it, but it's, 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 a, it's a fascination, but it's also a compulsion and an obsession. And asking the question, is there a purpose? Is there a reason? And there are many different kinds of answers, from absolutely no to maybe to certainly, and, and I'm, I'm integrating all these things. But most of it is from physicists, frankly, cosmologists, philosophers. I have this sense that the work that you do with the search for extraterrestrial intelligence can reflect in a way different than everyone else I'm talking to on this question about the potential of reason or purpose in the cosmos. Is, 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 does that make any sense? Well, again, it's this question of purpose. It's a really loaded word. It's a very human word. Deliberately. Um, and, and I wonder, from my point of view, I might prefer to answer the question, what might the universe maximize as, as a way of dealing with purpose? And the thing that the SETI, uh, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, brings to the table that's quite different than other views is, is we might be able to find that the universe for uh, maximizes the number of biological life forms, intelligent life forms. That, that might be that the, all of the laws of physics and chemistry interact in this universe so that that's the end product. That, yeah, that's a very significant statement if that were the case. And I don't know how else you might conclude that. It, it, it also might be that the universe operates to maximize the number of black holes. And uh, or or some other thing, but but this is one particular small cut at uh, what it might the universe might be all about. And, what it's the best at making. And, and and it might be to use the word best. Uh, I might prefer to maximize because it may be to optimize. Good. And optimize may be a different word than maximize because maybe it's not just the maximum number of biological uh, uh, species, but an optimal number and. The optimal number might have certain rarity to it be, to make it optimal for some reason. I mean, these, these are things we don't know. But these, this is a data, these are data points right. that you can contribute. That's right. And we can potentially say something about purpose or rationality or meaning in a broader sense, too. You know, the, the ideal would be if we receive a signal from another civilization, there's a message embedded in it. And then the question becomes, what is universal? We often think of mathematics as being potentially universal. You know, I, I would love it if a series of prime numbers is the first thing that we get. I'm not optimistic it's going to be quite that simple. But we have to ask, um, are there certain mathematical principles that any technologically sophisticated civilization would know? So that gets into a question about whether there is some inherent reality to mathematical concepts, whether that's somehow tied in to the physical structure of the universe. What's absolutely clear is if and when you get a signal, whatever that signal is, is remarkable of its own right, if it's a deliberate uh, active signal, because that is the one thing that some technological civilization has decided is the most important thing to send. And you learn a lot just from that. We learn a lot, even if it's going to be difficult to decode. So even though my focus is on creating messages that would be intelligible, I'm really open to the possibility it may be impossible to decode. But if we can get just the knowledge that another civilization has intended to send us a message, that that gives us a sense of purpose in the universe in another very anthropomorphic sense or very intelligence-based sense, which is that there are beings out there who have a purpose and intent on making contact. Yeah, and that's a good thing. I mean, purpose doesn't have this grand, has to have this grand vision of some, uh, you know, super physical purpose. Purpose can just mean intent. Purpose could be something that may not be inherent in the physical structure of the cosmos, but maybe something that arises in the same way that we human beings have individual purposes. Maybe there are purposes and intents of other intelligent beings as well. So uh, uh, how then can, can you, your current work in thinking about it, because you think about it both ways. You think about what, what the signal would be, but you're also doing some work in thinking about what, what our signals are and, and, and how we can communicate in the other direction, correct? We do think about that because it helps uh, us to understand 
perhaps the best way to use current technology to develop receivers mm -hmm. if we think about what might be transmitted. And uh, the, uh, the one thing about transmission, the one thing that really changes a point of view is to understand that transmission has got to be a long-term strategy. That's uh, one of the reasons that I, I like the Long Now Foundation. I talk to them about not only having a clock of the Long Now for 10,000 years, but how about a transmitter for 10,000 years? Mm. And is there a project that humanity could undertake for 10,000 years? I mean, we're pretty crummy at two-year and five-year plans, but uh, is there transmission, if it's occurring, is, is a different look at how we use our resources than we're currently capable of doing on this planet at this time. So if, if we would transmit and, and over a long period of time, have you thought the kind of simple initial signal that we would send? Well, again, we might want to start with something like mathematics. The question is, what do we need to presuppose if another civilization has a technology? It mm -hmm. seems like you need at least some basic understanding of mathematics and physics and chemistry in order to communicate. But, you know, if that's all that we are able to communicate, scientific information that a more technologically advanced civilization already knows, I think that's selling ourselves short. So I think we should be trying to say something about our aesthetic sensibilities, about our sense of morality. And if we can begin to send some basic mathematical and physical principles, we can use those potentially as a foundation to say something about, um, say, our sense of aesthetics. Um, if you look at some basic notions of fractals, for example, um, fractals, these repeating geometrical patterns um, that have a very simple mathematical structure, are also found in artwork around the world. You can see them in tiles of, of um, Christian cathedrals in Europe. You can see them in leatherwork of the Tuareg from Africa. And so maybe there's something that these fractals indicate about our sense of aesthetics. It may not be something universal, but at least it may be a way to communicate something um, to another civilization that shares some of our mathematics to explain some of our cultural idiosyncrasies. Let's go to the fundamental question again that uh, people ask all the time about does this universe or does our lives have reason or purpose or meaning or any, any, uh, any uh, synonym. Um, the, possibility of the existence of extraterrestrial intelligence or over generations after generations the lack of finding it. How would either of those answers reflect on our understanding uh, of, of purpose in the universe? Well I think the um, particularly let's take the the lack of other intelligent species mm. uh, at least cotemporally with us right. because if, if other technologies exist but they don't share a time space with us, we can't detect them. Um, I think it would be a very intriguing uh, problem to understand how chemistry, which seems to be a deterministic process, yes. and biology, which arose from chemistry, did not happen anywhere else. How did this deterministic process, what are the laws of physics? What, wh how is the universe constituted so that it could have happened only once or only now? And then perhaps to go further and reflect, reflect on our potential purpose, if we are indeed so alone, e even if it's alone just at this time, does that put extra responsibility on humanity as, as a race and as a, as, as a collective uh, uh, union of peoples to do more things in the, in the cosmos? I mean, uh, Some have actually argued that, that if we um, search for hundreds or thousands of years and don't detect any intelligence out there, that that makes life all the more precious on Earth. I don't see it that way. To the extent that we have a responsibility, to the extent that there is something precious about human life, I think we have a responsibility regardless of how many other civilizations are out there. I, I, I would certainly agree that we have that responsibility to ourselves and our children and our planet and all of that. But if, if we search for thousands of years with all the 
incredibly new technologies and we still don't find anything, that, that would, uh, at least if I put myself in the position, I, I would suddenly feel a little bit extra responsibility, not just to my children and their progeny, but, but a greater response. Maybe artificial, but I would, I would feel more. Well, I think if, if we were to find ourselves in that position, I think I would be more likely, more inclined than I am now to ask why and then to entertain this idea of purpose if indeed there is only a singular intelligent species within the cosmos. And on the other hand, if, if there are other intelligent civilizations, if, if rare or not so rare, uh, then one asks about the, uh, the prevalence and, and, the, and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the growth of, of, of biological intelligence or other kinds of intelligence is the natural outgrowth of the laws of physics. And is there something about that, that that naturally brings this forth? And is there something built into the universe about that? I mean, the exciting thing of what you do is that any answer that you give reflects on this question. And it's not, it's not just an incidental thing. It reflects deeply on this question. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with you at all. No. <laughs>